Managing design options in Revit as a consulting engineer can be a daunting task. In part two of this series, we're going to talk about multidiscipline collaboration using design options. The first thing that the consulting engineer would like to do is map the design options of the architect's file to his own file. Now, unfortunately, transfer project standards cannot be utilized to do this. So the process is going to be very manual. And one way we can go explore how the architect has set up their design options is through the visibility graphics of the view. The architectural file is already linked in, and I can simply go to visibility graphics of any of the views that I see it in and select the Revit Links tab in that dialog. And when I do, I can actually select the display settings button of the link file, which takes me into the settings of that particular link, and I can set it to custom for the basics tab. Once it's set to custom here, I can explore the design options that the architect has made. And here I can see they made a design option set called Phase 2 Edition Fitout. And within that option set, they have two options provided. Now that I know about that, I can go create them within my MEP file or my structural file. So I'm going to cancel my way out here, and I'm going to go to the Design Options dialog box. So I'll select Design Options within my MEP model and create an option set. I'll rename the option set to align with the architects. I'll rename the primary option to align with the architect's primary option. And then I'll create another option to align with the architect's secondary option. With my design options set up now, I can focus now on creating my views of each option. And let's take this 3D view for example. What I'm going to do is simply go back into the visibility graphics dialog, go to design options now that I have them set up in my project, and specify that the primary option is visible in this particular view. Then I'll select the Revit Links tab and go to the host settings of that particular link, set it to custom again, and then specify the design option within the linked architectural file to match the one in my MEP file. And when I OK my way out, I have a view dedicated to that particular option. I'll simply rename the view over here on the properties, and I'm ready to go. Now, there's a lot of subdisciplines in MEP, and there could be potential uh, issues in structure as well. But MEP is going to be very laborious to set up using design options. So one thing that you could do to save a lot of time here to set up your views is to create a view template which captures those design option settings in the visibility graphic dialogs. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the new view setup that I made for this 3D view in my project, and I'm going to create a view template from that view. I'm going to call it DO for design options and I'm going to call it the four enclosed offices. And it'll bring me into the view templates dialog box and all I need to do here is uncheck everything except for those two settings that I specified design options in which is the design options tab of my host view and the Revit links dialog. So I'm going to just leave those checked and uncheck everything else so that it doesn't override my graphics the way they are already. And now I have a view template. So if I come down here to the HVAC view, I can now go apply a view template to it. So if I right click on the view in my browser, I can apply the template properties that I just created by specifying them from the view template dialog here. And now that view is specifically set up to display the uh, design option, primary option for enclosed offices. I can repeat the process again and again for each of my subdisciplines. So now I can go apply the template to those views. And just like before, I can go rename them. So if I want, I can go up to the HVAC view and tag on the verbatim that I want for that. I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard so it's faster as I rename each file, or excuse me, view. And 
and there I go I got my option one view set up now and don't forget your ceiling plan so let me make sure that I get my ceiling plan here even though it's not open at the time so let's just make sure we dot all our I's and cross all our T's and I'll just rename that quickly and there we go alright so now that I got all my views set up for option one I can now go and focus on option two and all I need to do is much like I did with phasing and what I did in the architects file when I used design options which is a lot of duplicating so I'll start with a 3D view and I'm going to duplicate that so I get a clone of the view and now I gotta apply a view template however I don't have a view template for the second option therefore I can go make one so let's go up to the view tab on the ribbon and select view templates from the graphics panel and manage our view templates for a minute here's my already existing view template for option one what's really nice about Revit is that I can duplicate this and this time I'm going to call it DO enclosed and open offices and really the only thing I got to do is manipulate the two settings that it's capturing for the view template which is the design option tab for the host model so I'll switch that over to the second option and then the Revit links tab to show the linked option for enclosed and open offices and now that I have a duplicate template with the new settings I can go apply it to any duplicated views I make for option two so very quickly I made a copy of the view template and now I'm going to apply it to my duplicated view so I'll right click on that view apply the template for the correct design option and now it's showing option two I'll continue on to my HVAC plan I'll duplicate that view and then I'll apply the template and very quickly you'll see it shows me the secondary option I'll go to the ceiling plan I'll duplicate that view and I'll go apply the template to the clone so using the view template can be very very time saving um, when it comes to all the duplicated views you're going to have to create. So working my way down the list of my sub-disciplines here, I can quickly amass the views I need for each of my options. And then once I'm done duplicating, I can go apply the appropriate template. Now it's just a matter of renaming. So I'll get rid of all the copy of's, change one to a two. Again, just renaming. I can make a view list to make this go faster if necessary. And very quickly, I can make a lot of views with the appropriate settings that I need. okay so now that all the views are open of all the options I want to start focusing on mechanical and one of the primary goals of the mechanical engineers is to explore the volumes of the building and figure out the peak heating and cooling loads that will have to happen on this building in order for me to size my system correctly and lay out my system correctly so one of the things that you're going to find out is when you start getting into spaces and zones when design options are in place you're going to run into a brick wall. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up the HVAC plan for option one here, and I'm just going to maximize it. And I'll just close the other views in the meantime so that this is my only current view. So this is actually showing option one of the architects file, and I need to go add spaces to option one. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my active option to the four enclosed offices this will activate the design option and now I can lay out my spaces now if all goes to plan spaces should go in just like rooms correct but when you get into the analyze tab and select your space tool Revit will immediately prompt you to let you know that MEP spaces must appear in the main model 
So here's the limitation when consulting with design options on the MEP side of things. You can only use spaces in the main model. So unfortunately, I will not be able to explore the different energy models for each option. The current workaround is to bind each of the options in the architect's file and save them as separate linked files that you can bring into an MEP host file and then analyze each host file separately. So I'm going to close that up and while I'm at it, might as well talk about zones too. So when I click on zones, you'll see that I get exactly the same warning because zones have to use spaces so zones cannot utilize design options either. So just be aware that you, when you get into your options inside your MEP uh, systems that you cannot leverage design options. You're going to have to create separate files for each option. Okay, so all that aside, we're going to go and look at how we can utilize the rest of the functionality in the MEP systems to lay out design options. So I'm going to start with my HVAC here and I'm going to load up the ceiling plan while I'm at it so I can see um, the two side by side. So I'll just tile them up and I want to see where I can put air terminals in the layout. So the first thing I want to do is locate my air terminals in the ceiling plan here. So I'll go to the systems tab and select my air terminal tool. And what I get is my placement options for face hosted family. So I'll select that and I'll come into my model now and I'll start picking appropriate locations for my diffusers. So let's say I want to get this guy over here and then I want one down here as well and then one over here. So now that I got my air terminals located in my ceiling plan I can close that down and now I can go place my equipment. So to place my equipment just like I would in a new construction project I'll go pick the mechanical equipment command set my uh, associated level and my offset if necessary place the equipment where I want it and then I'm done now just like I said with the furniture in the architectural model duplication of elements is not very problematic inside of design options because each option is treated differently so if I have two units called number two even though they're in the exact same spot in both options Revit still identifies them as unique instances so now that I have that set up, I can maybe lay out some placeholder duct to kind of give the architect an idea where duct runs would go. So I'll just use the, uh, the, the ducting tool for placeholders, but before I do that, let me create a system. So I'll just pick my air terminals in my view, and I'll go create a duct system. And I'm going to call it supply air 2 for option number 1. Okay. And then I'll select my equipment so that the system browser can track the connectors and then I'm ready to lay my placeholder duct out. And I might as well go open up the 3D view so I can see everything that's happening as I lay out my option for my duct routing. So I'll just pick the connector on the mechanical equipment, right click and select draw duct placeholder. And I'll just use mitered elbows with T's for now and draw my duct out at the appropriate elevation and let's say I want to change to uh, round duct with taps for my branch ducting so as you can see as I place my branch ducting it's showing it over in the 3D view and there we go so that's option one for duct. Now let's take a look at option two. And I'm just going to maximize that. And I'm going to close any hidden views. Open up the appropriate views I need to work on that option. So once I got that all set up, I can begin laying out my devices for option two. So I'm going to use the ceiling grid plan here. Again, return to my air terminal tool, place on face, and I'm going to start putting air terminals in this view. So let me start by running the command in that view.
and as you can see it didn't put it in there because I'm in the wrong option so let me make sure that I'm editing the right option and there we go so let's make sure we're making the right choice here when we select our option and I'm gonna put a few diffuser there there and I'm gonna put one here as well as here and now that I got my diffusers in I can lay out my equipment location for this layout so go to my mechanical equipment rotate around make sure it's on the right level and offset and then change the number back to two because that's also only the second air handling unit even though it's in a different option and then I'll go make another system so I'll pick those four devices create a duct system this will be option two I'll select the appropriate equipment for that system and now I can draw my placeholder duct so now I can draw my placeholder duct in the view I'll make sure I'm picking the right duct type I'll pick my right branch type that I want and if the architect wants to link this file into his file to see what my goal is as far as layouts they can do so so there you have it setting up the uh, discipline settings for multidiscipline collaboration with design mapping and some of the limitations that you'll encounter and I would just repeat this process for all my disciplines lighting power devices whatever and uh, you'll be able to work together on design options with the architect